Hello. As promised, I'm here to spill the tea on how to quickly earn some tickets and orbs in Novari and Withergate. But I'm sorry to break it to you, friend. Unlike generating gold, there's no passive way of earning orbs and tickets. But don't worry too much, cause I've got you covered. I'll be sharing both common and unique methods for earning these goodies, along with some tips to make the process more efficient. Cause let's face it, we all love a good shortcut, don't we? So let's go! Let's start with the unique methods in Alvari and Withergate. Unique methods in Alvari Farming and Animal Forage If you've already cleaned your Sunhaven farm and did some harvesting, then you probably already have a couple of tickets and orbs before unlocking the two maps. That's because orbs and tickets drop from chopping trees, clearing debris, and tilling the land, giving you a head start by the time you reach Novari and Withergate. Once you get to Novari, you can use that sweet capital to buy some seeds and start planting. The total amount of tillable land in Novari is over 1,300 tiles, and believe me, I tried to till every inch of it for profit. But of course, you won't be able to plant around 1,300 crops when you've just arrived at Novari. So for starters, the acorn seed is the way to go. And then, you can switch to the dragon fruit when you get more orbs for maximum profit. Now let me break it down for you. We're excluding elemental seeds and mana gems from the equation because you can't plant mana gems until you finish the main quest. And elemental seeds are very, very unpredictable. You either get twice the profit, some profit, or no profit at all. And that's not the kind of risk we want to take when we're just trying to farm for some orbs. So here's the complete list of profit per seed for a reference. Looking at this list, you're probably wondering, why bother with all these different seeds? Why not just go all in on dragon seeds or maybe try your luck with cattails or indiglo in your first day? Here's an 8 day harvest comparison. Say you have around 200 orbs on your first day in Alvari. You'd be able to buy either of the following. 50 acorns, 25 wind chimes, 14 walk choice, 14 shiwakis, 10 indiglos, 10 cattails, or 6 dragon fruit. In 8 days, you'd be able to harvest acorn, wind chime, shiwaki, Indigo, Cattail, and Dragon Fruit for one time, while well you can harvest Wok Choi for two times. So the total profit would be 150 Orbs for Acorns, 150 for Wind Chimes, 112 for Wok Choi's, 84 for Shiwakis, 90 for Indiglos, 100 for Cattails, and 60 for Dragon Fruits. But why should you start with Acorns, you might ask? Well, other than them being the cheapest, they're also the fastest growing Novari crop, making them the best investment for your time and effort. But don't get too attached to acorns, because we'll be switching things up with dragon fruit soon. And the reason for that is none other than farm forages, which I'll be discussing next. Remember to max out your Triff Hunter, Propagation, Fertile Land, and Expensive Yield skills for maximum efficiency. Novari Farm Forages Did you know that planning the right number of crops can bring the whole zoo to your doorstep? It gives you item to sell for extra orbs too. You can attract a maximum of 17 animals every day. Planting 5 acorns will have squirrels scampering to your farm, giving out peanuts with one orb each. Plant 7 wind chimes and you'll be visited by wind sprites, showering you with sprinkling dust with one orb each. Plant 10 cattails and you'll have wildcats prowling around, bringing you catnip worth 4 orbs each. And last but not least, plant 15 dragon fruits and white baby dragons will come soaring in, gifting you with dragon scales for a whopping 10 orbs each. See that huge jump on the orb prices right there? These animals spawn on your farm every day, for as long as the crops are planted. So say you have 150 dragon fruit seeds planted. You could be swimming in 1,500 orbs from the crop profits alone. 
and another 500 orbs from 5 days of foraging from 10 white baby dragon. And if you have double take skill and max, then there's a 40% chance that you get times 2 scale from each baby dragon. And this is why dragon fruits are the best crops for profit in Nalvari. Animals Unlike Withergate, Nalvari sells animals that you can keep on your barn or farm like cows and chicken. Auto feeder and auto collector works on them too. So let's talk about the three unique animals that you can raise. First up, we have baby stumps. These little guys will give you 5 normal logs per day, which may not benefit you orb-wise, but crafters will love them for their gold value for making plants. At maximum gold heart, you might even get lucky and receive golden logs worth 2 orbs each. Next we have silk moths. These fluttering creatures produce fabled silk for 2 orbs each. Put that silk on your elven loom and turn it into a fabled fabric, worth a hefty 8 orbs each. It takes 3 silk to make 1 fabric, giving you an additional of 2 orb as profit. With Anne's keepsake and industrial skills and max, you can make a tidy profit in both gold and orbs with this method. And at maximum gold hearts, silk mods give golden silks worth 5 orbs. But if you're only after orbs, then baby griffins are your new best friend. These fluffy darlings yield feathers worth a generous 7 orbs each. And if you max out their golden hearts, then there's a chance that you'd receive golden feathers worth 12 orbs each. Just make sure to max out your top shelf, happy animals, food delivery, and golden hearts for maximum efficiency. Infusion Running low on orbs? No problem. Just call upon the power of mana. With Nalvari's handy dandy mana infusers, you can trade your excess mana for some sweet sweet orbs. Just think of it like a magical ATM, except instead of cash, you're getting orbs. This is also best paired with your in your element skill and mana regeneration food. Now let's move on to the unique methods in Withergate. Farming So, you got a head start with tickets by the time you reach Withergate, but it's not enough to pay your rent. No worries, just grow some crops and sell them. With 921 tillable land on the rooftop farm, it's important to choose the right crop. And the best ones are crack and kale, razor stock, and demon orbs. But let me break it down for you. For a reference, here's the complete list of profits per seed. Say you have around 200 tickets on your first day in Withergate. You'd be able to buy either of the following. 66 krakens, 50 razor stock, 33 moon plants, 25 tom melons, 20 sucker stem, 15 snappies, 15 eggplants, or 11 demon orbs. In 8 days, you'd be able to harvest kraken, razor, moonplant, sucker, snappy, and eggplants for once, while top melon and demon orbs for 2 times. Thus, the total profit would be 198 tickets for kraken kale, 250 for razor stock, 165 for moonplant, 100 for top melon, 160 for sucker stem, 135 for snappies, 75 for eggplants, and 154 for demon orbs. Looking at this list, razor stock obviously takes the cake, with crack and kale in a close second. But here's the thing, crack and kale only grows for 4 days, while razor stock takes 6 days. If we compare the two for 14 days, you'll be able to harvest crack and kale for 3 times, while razor stock for only 2 times. So with the same amount of seeds planted in our earlier example, crack and kale beats razor stock with a 94 ticket lead. But you might be wondering, why the heck did I planted a buttload of demon seeds right here? It's only because I make demon soul lattes, which I use for my mana. Gotta hit 2 birds with 1 stone, you know? But consider planting demon orbs too if you're planning on using earth fertilizers or has maxed out the propagation skill as demon seeds grows the fastest and gives a good amount of profit as well. Don't forget to max out your Triff Hunter, Propagation, Fertile Land, and Expensive Yield skill for maximum efficiency. 
Recycling If you are looking for a side hustle in Withergate, consider recycling forageables here. The most valuable recycled material is none other than concrete because you don't need a truckload of concrete to make a decent profit. Unlike other recyclables that require three materials just for one ticket, with concrete, it's a 1 is to 1 ratio. That means one recycled concrete block is worth one shiny ticket. So don't forget to max out your double take for a 40% chance of getting times 2 forgeable. Carnivals The carnival is also a great method for earning quick tickets, but it can get boring over time. Anyway, the best mini game for earning tickets are the shooting game and PAM. With this, you can earn a whopping 30 ticket profit per game after investing just 50 tickets in challenger mode. For the shooting game, be sure to have a crossbow with you and equip a firebeam skill if you have it. Use your crossbow and firebeam to destroy this mini game and earn 70 tickets. But my favorite is spam, the good old dummy punching game at the carnival. It's a great way to earn tickets, but it can be a real mana drain for magic users like me. If you are a sword user though, then Pam is the one for you. All you have to do is damage the dummy using your weapons and skills. If you can double your damage from the normal mode, you'll earn a sweet 30 tickets profit. Easy as that! Don't forget that you have to do this in challenger mode. Let's move on to the common stuffs that you can do in both maps. These are farming as trip hunter, fishing, slaying mobs, doing board quests, and crafting. Farming as a Trift Hunter As I mentioned on my previous video, the Trift Hunter method is one of the most effective techniques for all the maps. All you have to do is max out your Trift Hunter skill on the farming skill tree, visit the seed shop every day, buy all the seeds on sale, and plant them all, because the seeds on sale are sure to bring the most profit in terms of the farming profession. Fishing and Mobs the fastest way to actually earn orbs and tickets is true fishing using the bubble net skill and slaying mobs. The best places to fish at both maps would be at the respective forest because you'd be able to switch between using bubble net skills and offensive skill. You'd have time to slay a couple of mobs while waiting for the fishes to respawn. And the best part? Mobs drop orbs and tickets separate from their actual mob drops. Mob drops which you can also sell for more orbs and tickets. This area is the best spot to fish in Alvari, as this spot has two fish spawns and two mob spawn areas. Use bubble net here, and while waiting for the fishes to respawn, use your chain lightning or crossbow to defeat nearby mobs. For Withergate, the best spot would be this one since it has two fish spawns and three mob spawn areas. The skills that you'd want for fishing would be Bubble Net, Quality Catch, Familiar Waters, Spawning Season, and Advanced Fish Mapping for maximum efficiency. Lost Booty is optional as you'd only get orbs from this. Board Quest Doing Board Quest is also one of the easier ways of earning tickets and orbs, because Board Quest in Alvari and Withergate are usually fetch quests. Quests that ask you to bring an NPC a certain material that you can usually get from foraging, planting, fishing, slaying mobs, or quests that ask you to find a certain NPC in town and interact with them. These quests are very easy to accomplish but can be quite boring if you do it every day. So, yeah. I'm just suggesting stuffs here. You can choose whatever works for you. Crafting Lastly, we have crafting. The best items to craft for orbs and tickets are the planks and fabrics counterpart. The only problem here is that the planks sell a bit low as you'd have to make multiple planks to get one orb or ticket. But it isn't all that bad though since there's an abundance of material at the Nelvari and Withergate forest that you could use for crafting. If you're wondering which method is the cream of the crop, I'd say it all depends on what you're looking for, my dear friend. But here's my take. For orbs, there's no denying that the fishing and mobs method is a real catch. But only if you can slap those mobs with one hit KO. Otherwise, it's gonna be a really long grind. And as for tickets, if speed is your game, then the carnival is your ride. But hey, that's just my two cents. But that's it for now. 
Join me next week as I discuss the not-so-hidden content of Sunhaven. And if you're wondering how I got this much gold, then check out my Sorta Comprehensive Gold Guide right here. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more indie game guides coming your way. Bye!